All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you here for nine minutes with me, brought to you by the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. That's where I am right now, getting ready to sit down and have another amazing lunch here. I don't know what he has uh, uh, ready to go, but uh, I definitely uh, can't wait to have it. I've had the last couple of weeks, I've had the Creole burger uh, and, and a bunch of other really great stuff. So make sure you get here for lunch, get here for dinner at the uh, Phoenix Sports Restaurant. They have all you can eat steak, boneless wings, and spaghetti and meatball specials, and uh, they also have uh, a terrific array, uh, of course, of beers on tap and in the bottle. Their wings are delicious, and you can play some bets uh, on the ponies and watch them on the monitors that you see behind me. Uh, we're going to actually have a watch party here on November 3rd, so hopefully all of you can make it. If you're in and around Central New York, we're going to have a Syracuse Wake Forest College Football and Breeders Cup watch party, so come on out for that. All you can eat cheese pizza. We're going to have uh, uh, swag and prizes for everybody who comes, and then also so uh, $2 can specials uh, as well. It'll be a really, really fun day here at the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. So this video is dedicated basically to D.D. Gregorius and his Tommy John uh, surgery in the offseason. What does this mean for the New York Yankees? What does this mean for the Yankees at this position? Immediately, Okay, the obvious thing was, well, they'll just sign Machado and put him at shortstop because that's the easiest fix. Well, listen, there's a couple reasons why I wouldn't sign Manny Machado. The obvious reason to sign him is he's one of the top five players in Major League Baseball when he's healthy and producing at the highest level he can. But in terms of the actual uh, big picture thing, number one, He's a Scott Boris client. He's going to get at least eight, seven, eight, nine, ten years for a contract, and I would not give that contract out because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Number two, you're looking at probably thirty-five million minimum a year for Manny Machado. Number three, putting Machado at short. What do you do when Didi Gregorius comes back? You can't exactly trade one of the heart and soul guys on that baseball team and expect things to be absolutely the same. Um, you know, that's another problem. Um, the other issue with Machado that, that gets talked about but probably not talked about enough is the fact that he flat out does not hustle down to first base, and I don't want to relive that. Uh, we had that with Robinson Cano. Again, I thought the Yankees blew it by not re-signing Robinson Cano. I know he uh, uh, you know, got a 10-year deal from Seattle, and that was the, the, the number one reason why he went. He got that 10 years, of course, guaranteed. The Yankees offered him seven and obviously more money per year than Seattle did, but he jumped at the chance to take a 10-year deal with Seattle. Cano could have gone down as you know the greatest second baseman in Yankee history and uh, would have hit a bunch of home runs. He could have gone 290, 30, and 100 basically every year in terms of average home runs and RBI. Um, but the reality of the situation is he wanted 10 years and he went out uh, to Seattle. But one thing that really drove you crazy watching Robinson Cano was just how he always would dog it to first base. Remember, Joe Girardi used to get so pissed off when he didn't run to first base. Now he's dealing with that kind of shit with Gary Sanchez. But um, I just don't want to relive that again. Uh, Manny Machado, under the bright lights of New York, how would he handle it and all the rest? I think he'd be okay. Uh, a lot of people think, uh, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, the postseason, but it's the regular season. It's the day-to-day -day grind of the New York fishbowl, the constant questions and all the rest. I think this postseason was the best thing for Manny Machado because he's under the lights. He's under the big, you know, the the, 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 the he's, he's on the big stage. He's under the bright lights of the postseason. So I think that would help him if he He's a New York Yankee. I think going through a playoff run with the L.A. Dodgers, the L.A. Dodgers, there's no team, including the Yankees, that has more expectations to win a World Series than the L.A. Dodgers. Think of it this way. They haven't won since 1988. Remember the 30th anniversary of Kirk Gibson's home run in game one off of Dennis Eckersley uh, was just uh, the other day. Um, in fact, I heard Kirk Gibson on Dan Patrick talking at length about uh, – about that home run, but uh, when when you look at when you look at the situation uh, with LA, they have spent over a billion dollars the last few years on free agents and trying to win a world championship. They've brought in Manny Machado with the trade. They've made huge signings in the off season. Uh, they've gone out and gotten some help in the starting rotation. Um, you know, they, they've gone out and gotten a ton of guys, and there's zero excuses why the L.A. Dodgers the last four or five years 
haven't won a World Series. This is the third straight year they're in the NLCS. Now, Manny Machado is the shortstop of this team. Let's see uh, what he does the rest of this series. And if they get to the World Series, they're down 2-1 now in the NLCS. But I think it will help him this postseason run if he were to end up you know, in a place like New York in terms of that day-to-day -day pressure for sure. Um, so those are some of the things against signing Manny Machado. Now, look, if you don't sign Manny Machado, what do you do? What are the options for the New York Yankees? Well, one option clearly would be to just take Glaber Torres and put him over at shortstop and then plug and play second baseman somewhere um, like Tyler Wade and Ronald Torres and some others. You could also sign a second baseman like a Daniel Murphy. Now, remember, Daniel Murphy has horrendous, horrendous uh, uh, injuries in his right knee. That guy has so many right knee woes that you might not want to take a chance on him in, in, in worrying um, you know, when he's batting from the left side, when that thing's going to give out again going, uh, you know, going out in terms of his uh, extended stance. He's also not as good of a fielder anymore, so I don't know if you'd want to deal with that. Plus, he's going to command probably some high dollars. Uh, you could go another way uh, and just grab some low-end uh, second baseman who might be available. Maybe you go pluck an Ian Kim Kinsler, somebody like that, so you don't have to spend as much money. Uh, and then you can obviously hold Tor uh, Torres. It's short. Gregorius comes back, move Torres right back to uh, right back to second base. The other thought process would be, you know, to maybe um, you know try and figure out uh, a way to uh, maybe sign um, you know a couple of platoon guys. Uh, at who can play first and second base. We know Neil Walker was one of those guys last year. Todd Frazier was a guy who could play third and first the year before. So maybe you go that route. An interesting thing to look at, too, with the Yankee infield is there's been a little steam lately about the Arizona Diamondbacks trading off some of their assets. Remember, this team is looking into the crystal ball in 2019. This is the final year of the Paul Goldschmidt contract, for example. Would the Yankees be willing to trade Greg Bird and Luke Voigt for uh, Paul Goldschmidt along with a pitcher or two, I would do that in an absolute heartbeat. Um, I don't know what Luke Voigt's going to do next year, and I already told you I gave up on Greg Bird a while ago. So when you look at Greg Bird, when you look at Luke Voigt, when you can maybe move a pitcher as well, you take a look at those guys and trade them over for a guy who's a bona fide MVP candidate literally year in in year out in Paul Goldschmidt and then at that point maybe you wouldn't have to worry about the production that you're missing from D.D. Gregorius as far as the infield and the overall lineup you could just plug and play at second base put Tor Torres at short keep Andujar at third and then maybe down the line uh, you could move Andujar to, to left field or whatever the case may be. There's also talk that Andujar could move to first base and then you could just plug and play a third baseman and then sign Machado at short and then wait for Gregorius to come back and then figure out what to do, trade DD, do whatever you need to do. But those are some of the options for the Yankees if they were to sign Manny Machado or not sign Manny Machado. If I'm Brian Cashman, I'm staying the hell away from both Machado and Bryce Harper because of the big, big contract and the, and, and the amount of money on it. The only way I would go after Manny Machado is if I could guarantee that I could trade John Carlos Stanton in the offseason, get rid of that albatross situation. I know the Yankees saved a little bit of money, believe it or not, by bringing him over. They shed the money from Starlin Castro. They came under the threshold of the luxury tax this year, even by signing John Carlo. But I would tell you right now that I would still get rid of him. I don't think he's a good fit on this team. He's too boomer bust in a boomer bust lineup. They need more all-around really good players. I have no problem with hitting a shitload of home runs, but you better be able to balance that out with base hits and putting it in play in the postseason. The Yankees clearly couldn't do that all year, and they clearly couldn't do it in the postseason. Nine minutes with Mike Lindsley, IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. We're here at the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. Make sure you get here. Join me on November 3rd. Come here for lunch, dinner, and all the rest. You can follow me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.